Good morning, brethren, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters. Hello. A day in the life thereof. Bear with us for a moment. I'm joined by a beautiful little bluebird this morning. We're going to sing unto you. Shall we, my love? Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to thee. Though they lead over the cold, dark mountain, seeking his sheep. Or all along by Siloam's fountain, keep helping the weak. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go. If they lead through the temple holy, preaching the word, or in homes of the poor and lowly, serving the Lord. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow, we will follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go. Then at last when on high he sees us, our journey done. We will rest where the steps of Jesus end at his throne. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go. Amen. Amen. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And wherever the footprints of Jesus lead us, that's where we're going to go. Amen. One second, brethren. Hello again. <laughs> yes, yes. That was a very neat hymn for my wife and I to sing uh, this morning. We will follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go. Wherever he will lead us, that's where we're going to go. Whatever he wants us to do, that's what we're going to do. Why? Because he is the head of this house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And like I said, it, it, it was very neat for us to sing that hymn this morning. Because a day in the life thereof, a day in the life of those of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God. Today, dear brethren, we are going to be having a expository video on Psalm 63. Actually, what, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to go through Psalm 63 and I'm just going to share with you what, uh, what the Lord shared with me. Today was one of those rare, beautiful days when the Lord awoke me from my, <laughs> my slumber upon the bed with um, Scripture, with uh, verses of Scripture going through um, Psalm 63. For the past couple of days, um, Psalm 63 has been a jewel. All scripture is a jewel. More precious than rubies, finer than gold, sweeter than honey. But Psalm 63 recently has been just a precious jewel where you hold that jewel up to the light and you see a facet of it. Then you turn it this way and then you see another glint coming from it. It's just so beautiful. And Psalm 63 begins from beginning of the day unto the end of the day and reminiscing and remembering what it is to follow the Lord in the day. That's what we're going to be looking at. Okay? So, please get your authorized version. 
Get your, oh yeah, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you, okay? Check me out. Check me out. Follow me along. Keep me accountable, okay? So, without any further ado, a day in the life thereof. Psalm 63, beginning at verse 1. The very first verses in Scripture, by the way, before we begin in verse 1, the very first verse in Scripture. In the beginning, Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. What is the... Uh, We've talked about this before, but since there are quite a few of you who are new here, new to, to this channel, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? What's the first thing you do? Do you wake up, uh, get out of bed, and first thing you do, turn on that television and watch Dr. Phil? <sighs> do you wake up right away in the morning and light a cigarette? What do you do? What do you do? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God. What's the first thing you do? What's the first thing we ought to do as children of God? Children of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Psalm 63, verse 1. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Mm. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Early in the morning or early whenever it is you first arise. I know there are some brethren out there who has a sleeping schedule like a rolling coaster, like a roller coaster. I get it. But what's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you do? What we ought to do, roll out of bed, sometimes literally, roll out of bed, fall on the floor with your face on the ground, and give thanks unto the Lord. Thank Him for the rest. Thank you for, him th for the day. Thank you for the... That you, the breath that you have. Because remember, brethren, there are some people out there who cannot breathe well. Yeah, maybe self-inflicted, but nonetheless, you take your breath for granted. You take your rest for granted. Try having a heart problem. You'll see how sweet rest and sleep truly is. What's the first thing you do? Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh, there's a lot of people offering you water. Water that is fouled by the feet of those Jesuit trained cemeterians. Teaching you things contrary to scripture, but rather teaching you out of a Bible. Teaching you that God loves you. God isn't mad at you. Just believe. Daniel talks about, in the last days, knowledge will increase. Yeah, knowledge will increase, but wisdom. Is wisdom increasing? Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And to depart from evil is understanding. That is our job as the church of the living God. To fear the Lord which is wisdom, and to depart from evil, which is understanding, to not be conformed to this world. But see, there are so many out there preaching to you another Jesus. Oh, there's a plethora of Christianity out there. There's a plethora of religiosity. But yet, it's a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And it says here, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. First thing, even before you get up to go to the John or whatever, 
if, if that could be, I understand sometimes people wake up in the morning and they got a bolt. I understand. But nonetheless, early will I seek thee. Now, yes, scripture talks about, you know, how Jesus rose up early in the morning or rising early in the morning. Yes, yes, before one can discern the face of another. Yes, yes, that is scriptural. That is profitable. Some brethren don't have that kind of schedule. Yes, regardless, the first thing you do. And it says, early will I seek thee. Seek thee. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Seeking. Seeking. And how are we to seek the Lord? Through prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and through scripture. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 20 on to verse 22. Assemble yourselves, and come, draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations, come out of the world. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Oh, so many of them worshiping the other Jesus, that spirit of Antichrist. Satan, yeah. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Only one God. Not three persons that make one God. That's insanity. That's ludicrous. That's Satanism. One God comprised of a spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and a body. Okay? That's how we're made in the image of God. Okay? Verse 22. Look unto me, and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. The God that Christianity is preaching to you today is another Jesus not founded upon the scripture. Or the, the entire opposite, or the uh, other, is that God of your own making. See, Christianity openly preaches to you that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satanism. God loves you. God isn't mad at you. God's not going to judge you. How are you supposed to love someone that you're afraid of? Or what, or what else is there? The God that you look at in the mirror, you, you are your own God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What does the Lord say? For I am God and there is none else. That includes you yourself. Yes. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and we and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Let the wicked forsake his way. Forsake the way of the world. Forsake the way of Christianity that is teaching you contrary to the scripture. Okay? And the unrighteous man his thoughts thinking that you're your own God and that you, you are, that you are fit, that you know how to judge good and evil. Oh yes, Satan with the gar in the Garden of Eden. Uh, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But who truly knows what is good and what is evil? Only God does. Because your heart is de deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Okay? You're a fool if you trust your own heart. You're a fool. If you think by and of yourself, you can judge what is right and wrong. 
Only God truly knows what is right and wrong. Only God truly knows what is truly right and truly wrong. Not you. So, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. For the, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Calling evil good and good evil. Or, I'm saved just because I think I am. Yes. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Where no water is. Okay, Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. What God are you seeking? A God that has no standards? that loves everybody, that is not a God of judgment, but yet is against those who speak truth? What God are you seeking? Yourself? Psalm 27, verses 4 and verse 9. And, and see, my uh, in verse 1 in Psalm 63, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. Okay? My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land, dry and thirsty land, the world today, where no water is. Oh, they're offering an abundance of water. Tainted. Fouled by the feet of those who have trodden it. Such as the Jesuit trained cemeterians, the Catholics themselves, Jesuits. Yeah. Psalm 27, verses 4 and verse 9. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. Now this is written in a different dispensation, okay, under the law, where it's faith and works, but to instruct us in righteousness, okay, we who are saved, born again, converted of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of truth, okay? We are of the Lord's house, okay? We are of his house. When you say they are of my house, that means they belong unto me. They are associated with me. We are of the Lord's house. And there are no temples today. That's why you don't tithe today. Okay, unlike what them satanic Roman Catholics want to tell you, and the Baptists, and the Methodists, and the Lutherans, and all of them, and the Care Catholics, whatever. There are no temples made with hands today. Your, if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church and living God, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, one God, okay, dwells within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, okay? There's no temples today. So, for our instruction in righteousness, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Instruction in righteousness, belonging unto him. We are of his house. He cannot deny himself. We are of his bones, of his flesh, of his body. We are of his house, okay? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. You have God within you. Okay? Verse 5. For in the time of trouble, the time of trouble, doesn't say a, the time of trouble. Ref, what is this reference onto? What is this reference onto? Uh, that would be the time of Jacob's trouble. This is, that's what that's referring onto. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a lowercase r rock. Again, Psalm 27. Psalm 27 is also a psalm that you can equate unto the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, let's continue. Verse 6. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. <coughs> uh, and look at that. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. 
a uh, reference here, which are not part of the notes. Uh, reference Psalm 51. Okay. Uh, Psalm 51. Uh, verse uh, 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. Contrite, having godly sorrow. O oh God, thou wilt not despise a broken spirit. How do you get that? Being broken of your self-righteousness. You ain't broken of your self-righteousness. You have a haughty spirit. And a haughty spirit goes before fall. Okay? Let's continue. Hear, O oh Lord, in uh, Psalm 27, verse 7. Uh, let's continue, verse 6. And now shall mine head... Now, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord. Will I seek? And what are we reading to? Uh, verse 9. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me. O God of my salvation. Yes. O God, thou art my God. Early. The start of your day. Whenever your day starts. What, what are you going after first? Are you going to the world first? Turning on, waking up, turning on the TV to watch Dr. Phil? <laughs> waking up in the morning and... <sighs> what are you doing first? Are you seeking him early? Yes. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. And incidentally, uh, I don't know about y'all, but when I wake up in the morning, I'm uh, dry and thirsty. Aren't you? Water, you know, you can drink. You can drink your water. And that will pacify the thirst of the morning, you know, morning monk mouth. But at the start of your day, it's your soul thirsting for that living water that only our Lord Jesus Christ can give. And also, Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Verses 4 and verse 10. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Hold your place here. One reference in Isaiah chapter 31. Just one verse, the very first verse. Okay? Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1, the very first verse. Woe to them. Woe. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. For help, Egypt. In the Old Testament, when you read about Egypt, and for our instruction in righteousness, how God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, for our instruction in righteousness for today, Egypt is a type of the world. And our Lord has brought us out of the world and are guiding us onto the promised land, which is He Himself. Yes, the kingdom of heaven where he's going to reign for a thousand years with us. Yes, those who are saved. Yes, yes. But remember, our Lord Jesus Christ, he is our blessed hope. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. He is our liberty, you little heretic. He is our charity, okay? He is. So when you read, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, that go to the world. What are you doing when you begin your day? Whenever it begins. 
Huh? Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Uh, and and let's, uh, let's skip to verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men. Mere men. And it's not good to put confidence in princes or to have trust in men, but in the living God, which raiseth the dead. Okay? Now, the Egyptians are men, mere men, and not God. And their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. Hence, hence your recompense with going on to the world. Remember, recompense is defined either as a noun or a verb. Re recompense with an S is a verb. Recompense with a C is a noun. Okay, remember that. Okay, but in, back in uh, uh, Amos chapter five, verse five. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Don't seek unto worldly things. Don't go to man. Verse 6. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Seek the true God, the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, from the scriptures. Not the one that is given to you from Christianity. Or the one that is given to you from a Bible. But that which cometh from the scriptures, the true God. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood. And leave off righteousness in the earth. Seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion. And turneth the shadow of death into morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, and there's only one name given among men under heaven, by where, whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jehovah saves. Christ. Anointed one. Okay? Jesus Christ. Don't seek unto man. What is man going to do? Oh, Satan is going to come within that man of sin, the son of perdition, performing lying signs and wonders. But you at the root of who you are, at the root, you cannot make one of your hairs white or black. You're saying, well, yeah, I can. I can dye my hair. Yeah, but you can't affect the root. The root. You can only put it on the top thereof. You know, the facade. Who are you seeking? Who are you seeking? Who are you seeking to give you strength at the beginning of your day, whenever that day begins? Who are you seeking? Where are you going to? Let's read verse 8 again. Seek him that maketh the seven stars of Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, Jesus Christ. That strengtheneth, that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. Let's read verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Oh, these Christians. Oh, yeah. God loves you. God's not mad at you. Just believe. God loves everybody, even though they openly hate him and blaspheme his name. Yes, but God loves everybody. Everybody's going to be saved. Uh, you need to repent of your self-righteousness. And unless you have godly sorrow and call upon his name and fear of him, you know, fear of him because he can send you to hell, you're going to go to hell. And what do these Christians do? 
You speak the true the truth of the scriptures, the true Jesus Christ. Oh, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Ah. That speak against this God that you have apparently seen, that appeared to you. You're crazy. You haven't seen God. Huh? Or the God who speaks to you audibly. Psalm 63, verse 2. Let's read verse 1 again. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Why? To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, thy power and thy glory. Power and thy glory. Uh, this is not in the notes, but go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. You ought to know, Church of the Living God, you ought to know where we're going. Galatians chapter 2. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Thy power and thy glory, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ lives within you. If you are saved, born again, converted at the Church of God, of course. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me to see thy power and thy glory. Verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if, I, for if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Check this out. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Begins talking about what? The foolish. The foolish. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. The foolish are those who behave, live, as if they say in their heart there is no God. Right? And, and Psalm uh, 73, verse 3, For I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Verse 4, For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Verse 5, They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Oh yeah, they're set up, ain't they? A lot of these Christians, these unbelievers. Yeah, you're a Christian. Yeah, you, yes, you are. Yeah, bravo. Yeah, what's what's that all going to do to you when you stand at the great white throne of judgment, there, buddy? What is all those that land that you boast about and rubbing people's faces? What's that little petty kingdom of yours going to do at the great white throne of judgment, there, tough guy? They're going to do nothing. And because, and because these people are not Christ-dependent, but self-sufficient. Verse 6, Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. But now, let's read verses 17 on to verse 26. Uh, let's read verses 16 on to verse 26. Excuse me. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. But how, how come the wicked prosper? Like it says in Malachi. How, why do the wicked prosper? Those who uh, blaspheme God are set up. Why? When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of, sanctuary of God then understood I their end. To see thy power and thy glory, Christ 
dependent. Not self-sufficiency. Christ dependence. So as I so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Verse 18 in Psalm 73. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. You millionaire rich Christians. You Christians that got your little your little petty kingdoms, your little petty kingdoms of men. And when everything collapses, I don't know what am I gonna do? Again. As a dream when one awaketh. So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. You know. <sighs> Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Yeah, we're not supposed to be envious of these sinners. We're not supposed to envy them. <laughs> Why? Because they will come to destruction. Their foot will slide in due time. Their foot will slide in due time. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by thy right hand. Right hand, signifying our Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Where is God's counsel? In the authorized version of the scriptures. Oh no, oh no, put away the scriptures and, and go after a spirit that, because God is spirit, go after a spirit that you can't discern because you don't have a perfect standard in which you can discern which is which, but go to that uh, Diana of the Ephesians so she can tell you which one is which. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by thy right hand, by my, thou hast holden me by my right hand. Excuse me, I misspoke. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Again, right hand. He's held you by the right hand. Christ is holding you by the right hand. Again, the right hand. Right-handed. You know? That doesn't, that's not saying if someone's left-handed that they're not of Christ. No, 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 no. But Christ is seated on, seated on the right hand of God. Get it? The, significant, uh, the significance of holding by the right hand. Significant onto Jesus Christ. Okay? Yes, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. And who's holding your hand? Is it Jesus Christ? Or are you being led on by the left hand path? Hmm. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Oh, yes. And right here, verse 26. My flesh and my heart faileth. Yes. Like in verse 1 in Psalm 63. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Where no water is. Yes. My flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Like Peter said. You know, the Lord in his sarcasm. Will ye go away also? And Peter's like, Lord, where are we going to go? You are you are the blessed hope. What, what hope is there unless it is in thee? What hope is there in Christianity? What hope is there in the church building? What hope is there in man? What hope is there? Your only hope is Jesus Christ himself. He is our hope. Verse 3 in Psalm 63. Let's read verse 2 again. To see thy power and thy glory, 
so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. My lips shall praise thee. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Verses 4 and 5. Psalm 40, verses 4 and 5. Blessed is the, that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, lost sinners, nor such as turn aside to lies. I'm saved because I think I'm saved. I'm saved because I just believe. God loves you. <laughs> God's going to save everybody. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're one of the chosen ones. You're elect. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. What's that saying? Count your blessings one by one, and at the end of the day ye shall be surprised at what God hath done. You know, th I think about you scoundrel, scumbag devils who are so petty, who have nothing better to do than to drudge up stupidity. <laughs> the fact that you're alive today, and yet you still want to go on in your sin. What a wasted life you live. What a wasted life you have. What a waste. What a waste. What an absolute utter waste. And Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses 17 on to verse 24. How precious... Also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Uh, and we are in what? Verse 3 in Psalm 63. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Okay? When I awake, I'm still with thee. Look at this so far, okay? In the Early in the morning, you seek the Lord to see his power and glory in the land as you have seen him in the sanctuary, sanctuary of prayer, praying unto our God that he lives in you and that life that you live, you live unto Christ who lives in you. And then you thank him throughout the day for what he has done, what he has given you what he has allowed you to do, what he has allowed you to see, for the trials and tribulations and the temptations. Okay? Verse 18 again. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. Amen. You don't serve the true God my Lord Jesus Christ, God, my Father, of the authorized version of the Scriptures, I don't want anything to do with you. Go away. Go away. Go away. Okay? You want truth? You want to, you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh? Come, let us reason together, you and I. You come around with, with another Jesus, another gospel, false brethren, won't give subjection to you, not for an hour. Not even a millisecond. Huh? Get the ends. Why? For they speak against thee wickedly. Yeah, and preach another Jesus and another gospel. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against me? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. 
Perfect hatred is hating what God hates and loving what God loves. Way too many people will try to justify their own wickedness, their own evil, their own personal vendettas and hatred, and chalk that up as perfect hatred. No, 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 no. Perfect hatred is hating what God hates and loving what God loves. I'll give you an example. I hate abortion. Why? Because abortion is murder. I hate sodomy. Okay? Because God hates it. Okay? I hate every false way. I hate Catholicism. Okay? I hate Catholicism. Okay? Why? Because it's false. It's against Christ. Okay? Ye who love the Lord hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth I hate. And that self-hatred has to be, at first, turned a fret inward to know that you are a sinner who is chief. And on that, look at verse 23 on to verse 24 here. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. See, see, David here is saying, look, I hate those that hate you. What you hate, I hate. What you love, I love. But search me to make sure that I am not what you hate. Oh. oh. Do you realize God hates this other gospel? God loves you? <laughs> Do you realize God hates when people say, God's not mad at you. God's not going to judge you. That's a false gospel. That's another Jesus. God hates it. Do you know, I personally believe that God hates a holiday which worships that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan, and you try to affix onto it, worship onto him, and then try to justify it by saying you have liberty to sin. Psalm 63, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee, verse 4. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Will I live? Will I praise the Lord? I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Do you do that throughout the day? How often do you praise the Lord for the good, the bad, the ugly? Hmm? Do you thank Him for all things? We are to call to give thanks for all things. Do you do that? Do you start off your day with the Lord and seek Him? Hmm? Do you want to see His glory in you through your life because He lives in you? Huh? Huh? Are you grateful and gracious and thankful for the blessing of life that He has given you today? Are you wasting it? Hmm? Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Verse 3 in Psalm 146. Put not your trust in princes. Self-professed princes. Prince of the power of the air. Uh, and no marvel. 
for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And also no marvel that his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. His princes. Yeah. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Yeah. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Beg your pardon, brother. Yes. Beg your pardon. Yes. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 63. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. With joyful lips. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Praise thee with joyful lips. Proverbs 8, verses 32 on to verse 36. Verses 32 on to verse 36. Proverbs 8. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Which ways are, that, are those? Your own personal ways? The ways of the Lord. Hear instruction and be wise. Wisdom here equated wise, wisdom, fearing the Lord, departing from evil, okay? Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that love me hate death. And and uh, and, and here's a here's a little quick reference that I wrote down as an afterthought. Proverbs twenty three verse seventeen. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. See, if you fear the Lord, you're going to depart from evil. Now, do we do that every day as we should? No. Read Romans chapter 7. Okay, read Romans chapter 7 sometimes. Okay? Paul said, the thing that I hate, that I do. And the thing that I would, would rather do, I don't. Okay? That, I just bradized that, beg your pardon. Okay? But see, if we had even... We need more fear of the Lord. And Christianity, Christians, don't preach or teach the fear of the Lord. They teach and preach what makes you feel good. You are your own God, knowing good and evil. Christianity is of Satan. Oh, sure, okay, maybe it didn't start out that way. Look at what is known as Christianity. Look at what it has been made today. Why do you think I'm not a Christian? Why do you think I am adamant about removing that from the vocabulary and going, as it was said in the scriptures, as we call ourselves, the church of God or the church of the living God. The mistake you had there, your holiness, 
wasn't in the fact that you spoke up about this. The fact is, Your Holiness, that the bad thing is that you didn't have the guts or stones to live up what you pointed out. To live up to which, what you pointed out. That's the sad thing. That's the sad thing. Yeah. 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 All right. Where are we here? And, uh, okay. Now let's read verse uh, 5 again. In, Proverbs, in Psalm 63. The, uh, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate, meditate on thee in the night watches. Now, now look at that, okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at, uh, look at here in Psalm 63 from verses 1 on to verse 6. Look at that. Okay? Verse 1. In the beginning, God. You start your day with God. You seek God at the very beginning. Okay? To see His power and glory. To see Christ in you. To work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Not to save yourself. Not to work to uh, stay saved or be saved or whatever. No. But to work out what the Lord has put in Himself. Okay? And to recognize... His loving kindness is better than life. Okay? And that you will be satisfied when you awake with His likeness. Hmm? When you awake to live your life according to the scriptures. To not be as the world. Okay? And then verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Hence, from verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Verses 1 on to verse 6. A day in the life thereof. A day in the life thereof. Of someone of the church of the living God. The church of God. You begin the day with God. You want to see Him glorified in your life. Thankful that He has given you life. Okay? And that you want to be, that you want to conform yourself to this, to this, the scriptures, and not uh, to the world. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. Uh, Psalm 3, Psalm 3, check this out, check this out, check this out, okay? Psalm 3, Psalm 3. Not joke, Brad. Excuse me. Psalm 3. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many they many are they that rise up against me. <laughs> you look at what opposes you during the day of your life. Hmm? Think about that. Yeah, think about that. Okay. Many there be which say of my soul... There is no help for him in God, Shalah. Yeah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of mine head. You know, today when you go to bed, ponder. Okay, Lord, what did you keep from me? How did you protect me from these wasted life losers who do nothing but dig up dirt and have no anything can't do anything except cast stones and and sling dung meditate upon your bed tonight think about what the lord has kept from you hmm? but thou o lord art a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of mine head i cried unto the lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill shalah I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. And 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 very quick, very quick on that one. Uh, Psalm 127. I have that written down here. Yeah, Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Verses one and two. Psalm 127. Verses one and two. Yeah, uh, verse five. 
I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. Uh, Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. Except the Lord built the house, and we are of his house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Why are some of you so tired and ragged and ravaged? Is it because you're an unstable soul? You have no peace in your soul? You have a false peace in living in wickedness. Good luck. Let's continue. Verse 6 in Psalm 3. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves round against me round about. Yeah, not afraid of you. Not at all. Fear the Lord. See, you fear the Lord, you're not going to be afraid of these useless, wasted life idiots who attack you. Yeah. Yeah. Cheerio, mate. Yeah. Arise, O Lord. Yeah. I will not be, at, verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. A. Eh? Yeah. Have some back bacon with that, eh? Arise, O Lord, save me. O oh my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Shalom. And look at Psalm 4, verse 8. Okay? Uh, verse 6 in Psalm 63. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Yeah. Verse 8 in Psalm 4. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. See, verses 1 on to verse 6 in Psalm 63 is giving you the Game plan, I guess you want to say, or the battle plan. A plan of attack on how we as the church of the living God for us today, this is instruction in righteousness, how we are to focus our day, how we are to set our mind on Christ to face that day. Okay? Because you've got to remember, what say it the scripture? What say it the scripture in Proverbs 27? Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1, okay? Proverbs 27, verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You don't know what you're going to face today. You don't know if you're going to die today. You don't. You don't. You start out your day with God. To see Him. To be fed of Him in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. This world in Christianity. To see His glory in your life because He dwells within you. To work out what He has put in Himself. To give Him praise for everything throughout your day. And at the end of the day, you thank Him for the day He has given you. And consider what you didn't see that He protected you from. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And also in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This is significant. Matthew chapter 6, verses 27 on to verse 34. Now, in context, He's saying this in context of the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven where our Lord Jesus Christ is. That's east, by the way. When you see me point behind me, that's east. Okay? North, east, south, west. Okay? Right now I'm facing west. So when you see me east, that's where Jerusalem, Israel is. East. Okay? But the, the 1,000 year reign, the kingdom of heaven, is when Jesus Christ will be sitting on the throne. God himself, our Father, will be physically on the earth, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So in context, 
in Matthew chapter 6, when he's talking about this, it's in context, because remember the miracles of the loaves and the fishies, where he uh, miraculously provided meat for those, his people, miraculously when it wasn't there? Hence, that's the context. When the king is on the earth, he will miraculously provide for his people. But to instruct us in righteousness, how we ought to live today within this dispensation, okay? Instruction in righteousness, doctrine, this does not apply for us. Doctrine, how one is made right within, saved, right with God within the current dispensation. This is for the kingdom of heaven. But, as I said, for our instruction in righteousness, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit onto his stature? I'm 5'7", actually. Okay? My wife is 5'3". And when we start worrying, my wife says, Boy, you should be about uh, 8 foot tall by now, right, Brad? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now again, in context, our Lord is saying this because this is for the kingdom of heaven, when he is going to be ruling and reigning on the earth. And when the king is on the earth, he can, right, provide for you. He can do that today, but again, the Sermon on the Mount is specifically doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. We're looking at this for instruction and in righteousness. Now let's continue. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, read Isaiah chapter 40 about the grass, okay? Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And that is the only time Faith is ever mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount. And look at it. It's in the reform. It's in the form of a rebuke. That's the only time faith is mentioned on the, in the Sermon on the Mount. And it's a rebuke. Why? Because the Sermon on the Mount is all about what? Works. Because the kingdom of heaven is what? Works. Okay? Don't believe these heretics. Don't believe these heretics who tell you that this is doctrine for us today. Or that we are, you know, that we're in the kingdom of heaven today. Oh, God forbid. Watch out for those devils, okay? Verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or, what shall we drink? Or, wherewithal shall we be clothed? Again, context for the kingdom of heaven. Today, you got to put legs in them prayers, Okay? God is with us if we are saved, born again, converted. You know, like in the book of Numbers, when the Lord's like, okay, see, 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 see the promised land over there? I'm with you. Go, go get it. I'm with you. I'll make it happen. But you've got to go, go get it. Go get it. I'm with you. Go get it. Don't just sit there and wait for it to fall out of heaven. Could that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it could. But in whatever capacity it is that the Lord has put us in, therein we are to do what he has called us to do. Work therein. Okay? So you got people who will come to this today and say, well, you should you know, quit your job and whatnot, whatever it is. Uh, this is in context of the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't apply for us doctrinally today. Beware of that. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows what you need. But he wants to have that relationship with you. Wants are many, needs a few. But seek ye first, this is significant, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added on to you. That's significant. That is very significant. Kingdom of heaven, I think it appears something like, what, 46 times? I had marked how many times kingdom of heaven appears within the book of Matthew. I think it's 46 or maybe, or maybe some, I forget how many, 
but I once did that in my other set of scriptures, circled and counted every one, okay? Kingdom of Heaven only appears in the book of Matthew, and Kingdom of Heaven is always a reference onto the physical kingdom in Jerusalem. Kingdom of God, in the context in which it appears, can mean the spiritual kingdom, which it generally means, or it can, depending on the context, be referring onto the kingdom of heaven, okay? But see, that's by context. Generally, when you see kingdom of God, it's spiritual, not physical. And why that is significant, significant here in this, in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, the physical. So he's saying, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, spiritual. Okay, that's significant. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are not the same thing. Like I said, yes, there are, are, are appearances in scripture where kingdom of God is a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. But that's defined in the context. And that is the lesser of the few of the appearances. Generally, the appearances of kingdom of God is spiritual with the minuscule, the exception being a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Remember that. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, I, 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 I beg your pardon. Verse 6 in Psalm 63 again. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Why? Okay, why? Because of verse 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with morrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I meditate, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Because he got you through another day. You saw his glory in this land of drought. You made it through another day because of his grace, his loving kindness, his long suffering, or his patience. You don't have tomorrow. You don't have the next few moments. And how often we take that for granted. And and James chapter four. James chapter four. And it's interesting about James chapter 4. James, as I have said to you before, James is a book specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Just like the book of Hebrews. Yes! There's doctrines that cross dispensational lines, but in an overall sense, in an overall application, the book of Hebrews, the book of James, our time of Jacob's trouble epistles. Written in the New Testament. Yes. But... James chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 17. And see, James saying this is in context of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. You take the mark of the beast, you go into hell. Ipso facto, no second chance. You're done. You're going to hell. Okay? You take the mark of the beast. All right? And you don't know what's going on, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? James is saying that within the context of those Jews that are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But what can we take away from it for today? What we already have. James chapter 4, verses 13 under verse 17. Go to now. Ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's like, well, hey, you know, we're, we're saved now, all right? We'll go there tomorrow. You don't know if the, of, of the man of sin, uh, the son of perdition's uh, Gestapo is going to be in that city during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. And see, that crosses dispensational lines. Okay? For what is your life? It is even a vapor. 
vanity of vanity, said the preacher, all is vanity, that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away, like grass, like grass. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at verse 15. For ye ought, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. I asked my wife, what are you going to do today? I don't make plans, Brad. You know that. Yeah. What are you going to do today, Brad? Oh, see what the Lord will have me to do and speak about and who I will talk to and whatever. Well, we got a lot of stuff going on right now. We're kind of busy at the moment, you know, but you know, we don't set plans too far ahead. Why? Because we don't know if exactly this. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. I've had two heart attacks. I've almost died twice. It's the Lord's will that I'm here. Okay? We don't know what's going to happen today. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Psalm 63, verses 4 on to verse 6. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. At the end of your day, Lord, thank you for the day that you have given me. Thank you for protecting me from what you protected me from, from things unseen that I don't know about. Please forgive me for what I've done to you. Please forgive me of my sins. How grateful are you truly? Are you just grateful for the tangible? Or do you truly seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Verse 15 again in James chapter 4. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such a rejoicing is evil. Well, a week or two from now, I'm going to do this and get all this kind of money. I'm going to go to my GoFundMe thing and, and go to the world and Facebook, which is associated with GoFundMe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to go do all this and build this all up. You don't know if you're going to live tomorrow, boy. What is your life? It is but a vapor. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And what is good? What is good? There's only one good, that is God. And, you know, I mentioned this very quickly. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 about the grass. Okay? All right. Uh, let me see. Yes. Uh, verses 3 on to verse 8 in Isaiah 40. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Talking about John the Baptist who came in the spirit of, of Elijah. Okay, it wasn't Elijah himself. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Now, that's a reference on to people. Okay? Every mountain. Every mountain. These guys who are who live, put themselves on a high mountain, the arrogant and proud, the lofty. Okay? And hills, the, every mountain and hill shall be made low. Okay? And the crooked, crooked in your walk with the Lord, or crooked in general, shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And yes, people, the Lord's salvation is available to all. 
Not everybody's going to come on his terms. Way too many people boot the door out of the way and scream through the crack their heresy. Yeah. You gotta shut up sometime, you know. But let's continue, okay? And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And now in Psalm 63, verses 7 and 8. Because thou hast been my help. See, verses 1 on to verse 6. A day in the life thereof. You begin the day with God to see his likeness, to work out what he has put in himself, okay, to see his glory in the land, okay, to be thankful, to bless in his name, to be a blessing, to shoot forth his praise throughout the day by living your life according to the scriptures, that you are an example, an ambassador unto the lost, okay, and at the end of the day, you thank him. Why? Because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Again, the right hand thing. Okay, earlier, okay, I botched it on that, but I corrected it. Okay, um, where is I, um, where did he say that? That's what, uh, we already read that. I messed that up. But uh, the right hand thing. Okay, he held me by my right hand. He held me by my right hand. Okay, and right here, the right hand thing comes up again. Okay, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Thy right hand, synonymous with our Lord Jesus Christ, who is on the right hand of God. Again, that's not saying that if you're left-handed, you're satanic or nothing like that. No, no. The majority of those on earth are right-handed. Okay, and remember, they were those of Dan, I believe it was. Dan or Benjamin, one of those two, that were left-handed and could sling stones at a hair breadth and not miss, okay? Okay? It's not saying anything against those who are left-handed, okay? But Christ is known as being on the right hand of God, okay? Okay? And remember, the left-hand path is the one you got to watch out for, okay? Because thou hast been my help, therefore, shall, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. In a, day of, in, the, in a day of the life thereof, of those of the church of the living God. You wake up. Thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, get me through this day. Help me that you come out. That you increase that, and that I decrease. That I be an ambassador unto the lost having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Seeing your glory, thanking you for what you keep me from and what you allow to come on me, whether it could be good, bad, or indifferent, or ugly. Okay? In all things give thanks. Why? Because thou hast been my help. Therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul, my soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand uh, upholdeth me. Verses 1 and verse 6 talk about the day, a day in the life thereof. Verse 7 and 8 denotes what? Rest. Rest. Right? Because you go to your bed and rest. You rest in the fact that the Lord what? Has been, because thou hast been my help, because the Lord is your help. Right? Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. You will rest in the Lord. You will go to that well. Oh, amen. Alleluia. Okay? My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Okay? And on this, on this, Psalm 121. 
Psalm 121. Psalm 121. Come on, get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. And while we're here, go to um, Psalm 119. Go to Psalm 119, Shin. Psalm 119, Shin. Psalm 119, Shin. Uh, that's verses 161 under 168. Okay? Hey, learn to identify Psalm 119 by that. See where my finger is? See that? By the subheading there? Learn when it comes to Psalm 119. Learn how to identify it by that. By that top part. Okay? Psalm 119, Shin. At the end of the day, princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Count your blessings every day, one by one, and at the end of the day thou shalt be surprised what the Lord hath done, what he has protected you from, how he has blessed you, what he has shown you. Yes, I will rejoice at thy word. As one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. I don't even praise him seven times a day. <laughs> but therein, a day in the life thereof, giving praise for what he has given us. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before me. You know where it says in verse 165, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them? What does that mean? Um, whether he slay thee, uh, wh whether he keep thee or slay thee, yet will I trust in him. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay? You're not going to be offended when the Lord rebukes you or chastens you. Because he's dealing with you as a son or a daughter. You're going to be offended by the lost. You're going to be offend by, offended by the wicked. You're going to be offended by these heretics. And these Jesuit coadjutor infiltrators, they're going to offend you. That's their lot in life. But the offense there, okay? Remember Christ said, Blessed are all they who are not offended in me. Does God's word offend you? Hmm? It should offend your self-righteousness. But see, someone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you love a rebuke when it comes from from a brother. Uh, my my young brother from Croatia, um, he he's rebuked me several times. Praise the Lord for it. Okay, praise the Lord for it. Okay, I've been rebuked by several people. Okay, and praise the Lord for it because reproofs of instruction are the way of life. We are not offended when rebuke, reproof comes from the scriptures. From a brother or a sister. Yes, we are going to be offended by that. And those Christians who say that they are of us, but they're not of us. 
Just wanted to clarify that. And while we are in Psalm 119, one of my favorites, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Okay? Now, I told you, you look at the subheading. Okay? I'm not going to give you the verse numbers for Mem. You find it. Okay? Get that. When it comes to Psalm 119, learn them by the subheading. And if, if your scriptures doesn't have subheadings, sorry. Put a line, you know, take, take, your little, take your little pen and mark them off, okay? But I'm not going to give you the verses. You figure this out, okay? Come on. Psalm 119, Mem. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. Yeah. Sporting themselves while they feast with you. Yeah. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. The inference there is that the teachers weren't meditating on the testimonies of our Lord. Where are the testimonies of our Lord? In the scriptures. Okay. I understand more than the ancients. Because I have, because I keep thy precepts. Those uh, ancient people before us that did not have the precepts of the Lord or didn't follow after him. Many of that are like that, you know. Okay. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Yeah. Yeah. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. You're looking at things you should. If your hand offend thee, cut it off. Putting your hands where it shouldn't be. If thy feet offend thee, cut it off. Cut them off or cut it off. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. If you're going places that you shouldn't go. It's not talking about literal self-mutilation. I've even heard with the when our Lord said, if your hand offend thee, cut it off. I've even heard people try to say, well, see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you get it in your hand, you can cut your hand off and be, and be saved. I have actually, honestly, seen comments and heard of people say, try to tie that in, where the Lord says, if your right hand offend thee, or if your, if not right hand, if your hand offend thee, cut it off. So see, see, during the time of change trouble, you can go ahead, and the eye, huh? Yeah, 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 but see, if it's in your hand, see, that proves you can cut your hand off and... The, the depth of the deception that we are seeing today, brethren, is wonderful. <laughs> oh, full of wonder, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue in Mem. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Yes, more precious than gold, than fine gold. More precious than rubies is the scriptures. Sweeter, what does that say? How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Precepts. Understanding. Departing from evil. Therefore hate, therefore I hate every false way. And I do. I don't hate the people who adhere to those, except those who are made, who made themselves the enemy of the Lord. Okay? If you have crossed that line of no return, there, chap, uh, uh, cheerio, chap, okay? If you have crossed that uh, line of no return, a eh, Okay, you are, my, you are my enemy because you have chosen Satan to your own destruction. But the way that these people follow, we hate that. We hate every false way. I do. What about you? Okay? Now let's continue. Let's continue. Okay? So, uh, Psalm 63, 7 and 8 again. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand, uh, thy right hand upholdeth me. Okay. 
Psalm 118, Psalm 118, verses 4 on to verse 17. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Thou couldest do nothing against me unless it were given to you from above. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. <laughs> it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Other men or man yourself? I am saved because I believe. So you saved yourself. I am saved because I called upon the name of the Lord. But you weren't broken. Or no contrition. Definitely no fear. You just... You know, I called on the name of the Lord a hundred times and it never worked. Because you were never broken. You have no godly sorrow. No fear of the Lord. So of course, if you're not broken or contrite or have no fear of the Lord, you're just saying, Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Jesus is the Lord. You, you, you're just saying empty words. Empty because you're not broken or contrite or have any fear of the Lord. <sighs> yes. Yes, it is better to put it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man, them or yourself. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, as we already addressed. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The prince of the power of the air. And his princes. No marvel. For his ministers are transformed. As the ministers of righteousness. Okay. Yeah. All nations can pass me about. But in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They can pass me about. Yea. They can pass me about. But in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall. Oh yeah, so many of you have, yeah. But the Lord helped me. A. Hey, hey. Yeah. How are you doing physically, by the way? You'd love nothing than to see me destroyed. And you have helped and taking away dross out of my life that should not have been there. And you did try to take a saved man and to try to separate very friends. And you did that with someone more recently who I thought was a true friend. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get what's coming to you, dear friend. I hope you repent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall. But the Lord helped me. Yes, the Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. Yes, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. There's that right hand thing again. Jesus sitting on, on the right hand of God, okay? It's reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The right hand of the Lord is exalted. It's given him a name above every other name, okay? The right hand of the Lord doeth, doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And that's it right there. That's it. You as the church of the living God, you're saved, born again, converted, new creature in Christ Jesus, declare the works of the Lord. How do you do that? By living your life according to the scriptures and being an example unto them. Having the word of reconciliation, 
ministry of reconciliation. You are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. How you serve him reflects him. Shew the works of the Lord. How? That he had mercy and saved a miserable wretch like me. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And blind, but now I see. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Okay? And now verses 9 and 10 in Psalm 63. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. When you do try, they shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine, you know, that dig away from the vine to uh, dry up so that there's no nutrients. Yeah, they shall be a portion for, fo they shall be a portion for foxes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was very, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Verses 23 on to verse 34. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Why? For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Now it doesn't say right hand, but you can confer. There it is. The Lord holding with a hand again. Don't miss that. Okay? I have been young. And now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And very quickly, um, we ourselves, you know, the Lord has removed from our lives the dross. The Lord has removed from our lives those who aren't of us. To, for that which remains may sparkle. You know, the remove those, the shake those things that cannot be shaken. Okay? And the things that are shaken, they're gone. They're gone. Okay? They're getting visits by devils. Okay? Okay? They're trying to bring down a Pope. Okay? And the Pope, His Holiness, He'll bring down Himself eventually. Okay? Uh, yeah, uh, or infiltrators, you know? We can attest to this. Verse 25. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. He will not forsake you. He might bring you to the end of all things, but he's not going to forsake you. Nor his seed begging bread. Once are many, needs are few. And also a perfect example, uh, my dear beloved brother in North Dakota, my dear friend, Brother Jeff. Okay, yes. Um, perfect example. Man can't work. Okay, he can't physically work in the workforce, kind of like I can't, you know, with the heart problem and whatnot. Um, can't work, getting no help, but yet, the Lord is miraculously providing for his needs. Not his wants. And he'll be the first one to tell you. But providing for his needs. Okay? My, my dear sweet brother in Croatia. Okay? Also, his health is so that he can't, his health is so that he can't be in the secular world. But yet, the Lord is giving to him, providing for him, for his needs. My brother and best friend. Again, he tried to work, but the Lord's like, you know, I told you not to. 
and the Lord, the Lord chastised him pretty hard about that. And he paid a heavy price for it. And he, he would be the first to tell you. But there again, beautiful testimonies of verse 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Why? Because he delighteth in mercy. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, condition, and dwell forevermore. Hmm. And dwell forevermore. Now, this is talking about Israel in the land, a different dispensation. Salvifically today, okay, this doesn't apply for us doctrinally. This is instruction and in righteousness, okay? When it comes to your salvation, you come to the Lord on His terms. You're once saved, always saved. You're going to heaven no matter what, okay? If we deny Him, He will deny us. Meaning blessings, provisions, gifts, mercy, protection from enemies, that kind of stuff. It's not talking about salvation, okay? You come to the Lord on His terms. You are eternally secure. You are sealed until the day of redemption. You can lose rewards, you can lose testimonies, you can lose protection, provision, blessing, yes. Okay? But salvation, no. Provision, blessings, yes. Hence, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Okay? Not for salvation, for us today. Okay? For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And that 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 uh, one um, heretic young man, uh, what was his name? Um, Cody Resilient. You know, it's not the fear of God; it's the love. It's a, you're a heretic. You're not preaching the uh, uh, You're not speaking the wisdom of God, okay? You're not. You're not speaking uh, talking about the fear of the Lord. You're preaching a false Jesus, another Christ. Yeah. yeah. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked, and this, this is so true, the wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him with some of the most ridiculous arguments that they can even think up of. Think of. It's like, dude, that's the best you got. That's the best. Shows how pathetic you really are. Really, really shows how pathetic you are. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew that was you, by the way. <laughs> You know who you are. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway. The wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Where is that in John? Where is that in John? Where our Lord says that to Pilate or Pilate. Pilate, Pilate. Whatever. Where is he? That's in John what? Help. Where is that brother? Where is that brother in John chapter? Ah, yes. Yes. Ah. Uh. Oh, where is that? One second. One second. Sorry about that. I was looking right at it. John 19, verse 11. Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Back in Psalm 37, verse 33, The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Verse 34, Wait on the Lord, and keep his way. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. 
yet I will maintain mine own ways before him. Not mine own ways that I come up with, but will walk according to the scriptures until he revealed to me my iniquity. Okay? Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. To be quite honest, I don't really want to see the destruction of some of my enemies. But I'm going to. But I'm going to. Why? Because we have a promise for us in Scripture. Uh, Proverbs 3, just a quick reference. Okay, Proverbs 3. And uh, refreshing our memories here, verses 9 and 10. But those that seek my soul, in Psalm 63, But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. And for us, let us remember Proverbs 3, uh, verses 4 and verse 8. Or, or, excuse me, verses 5 on to verse 8. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Okay? God, understanding, departing from evil. Okay? Only God knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. Yeah, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, meaning that you are able to judge what is good and evil. But see, you in yourself are not sufficient to know what is truly good and what is truly evil. Only God does. Okay? Yes, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, he shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Okay? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. When people don't examine themselves like Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians. Many are sick and weak because they don't examine themselves. Yeah. 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 But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth, for they shall be for they shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for four foxes. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. What about these people? They go with a multitude to do evil. Misery loves company. They rejoice in those who also do the same things they do. Okay? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness... And them that perish, why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And because of that, God will choose your delusion. You don't want him, but you want to choose Satan. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Misery loves company, right, buddy? Verse 11 in Psalm 63. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. You see, Psalm 63, a day in the life thereof. Verses 1 on to verse 6. How we, an example of how we should put forth our day. And remembering verses 7 and 8, that, you know, thankfulness, that we follow hard after him, that all that we want for ourselves and our brethren and all people is for that Jesus Christ be glorified. And remembering what he has protected us from. And remembering our enemies that are, are many. 
But we also got to remember that they shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. Psalm 63, in my opinion, is a perfect example of, number one, how we as the church of the living God for us today, for our instruction and righteousness, should live our lives, beginning with God, giving thanks unto him, working out what he has put in, and at the end of the day, thanking him for every little thing, giving thanks to him seven times a day, you know, praying seven times a day. I do that sometimes too. Yeah. But giving thanks seven times a day, I don't even do that every day. Every day. We should. It's a picture of a life of how we should live. Beginning with God, giving thanks unto him, wanting to shoot forth his praises in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Psalm 62. Let's finish this video up with Psalm 62. Whereas Psalm 63 gives unto us a day in the life thereof, working backwards, Psalm 62. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischiefs against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. You're all about mischief, my enemies. Okay? <laughs> I shall not be greatly moved. How long? Uh, yeah, yeah, verse 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 3. How long will ye imagine mischiefs against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Shalah. The fellowship that these people have, the enemies of Christ, the bond that bonds them together is hatred. Not the bread of life. The bread of life, and between that bread of life is peanut butter and jelly. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. But see, the bond that bonds these people together that are not of us is hate. Hate of Jesus Christ Hate of his word and hate of those who are actually his. The things that, that binds you guys together isn't the love of the truth, but is hatred of the truth. And all and for hatred for all of those who love the truth. The bond that bonds you together is hate, not love. My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Isn't that beautiful? Doth not this speak for itself? Who's your rock? <laughs> Poor Peter. <laughs> God help you. Yourself. Yeah. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Shalah. Surely men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree are a lie. Yes. To be laid in the balance. They are all together lighter than vanity. Daniel. 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 Where is that? That's... Uh, uh, Daniel chapter 8 uh, or is that 9? Uh, Daniel chapter 8. 
Oh, where is that? Where is that? Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Where is that? So, I beg your pardon. All right. Daniel chapter 5. Okay? Look at this. Look at verse 9. Okay? Surely men of low degree are vanity. You know those lower ponscum coadjutors that just want to stir up trouble? Okay? Men of low degree are vanity. And we already read in Isaiah chapter 40 about how all flesh is grass. Vanity. A vapor. Okay? Okay? Verse 9. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. You think you have something when you're nothing. You deceive yourself. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Daniel chapter 5. Verses 25 on to verse 28. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, eperzen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene. God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. He's numbered your kingdom. Here you know, your little petty kingdom that you're building for your, your, yourself that you can live the rest of your life as a king and build up your barns and you'll have rest all the rest time of life here yeah yeah god hath numbered thy little petty kingdom and finished it tikel thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting you have been weighed and measured and been found wanting Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Divided. Like Alexander the Great, when he died, no one came up to rule after him, but it went on to his subordinates or something. And that petty little kingdom that you're building there, sir, you got to name it after your own self, right? Who are you going to leave it to? How do you know if the man coming after you is going to be a godly man? How do you know? Back to Psalm 62. Verse 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Why? Because they make themselves wings. They fly away. And who are the ones that are giving you these riches? Psychopaths? Deceivers? How do you know? God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. That power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. Belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. Yea. As it saith in the book of Revelation. As it saith in the book of Revelation. Chapter 22. Verses 12 on to verse 13. And behold, Revelation 22, verses 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He is our reward. He is our reward. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega. Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. First and the last. So I ask you, dear brother, dear sister. <laughs> My enemies, yeah, you, you can't sleep unless you've done mischief. 
You can't sleep unless you've caused some to fall. Yeah, I pity you. You reprehensible, uh, odious, vomitous, putrid people who have chosen Satan to your own detriment. But those of you, how do you begin? How do you start? How do you start your day? Who is the center of your life? Is it truly Lord or is it you? We have seen in the scripture a, a portrait in Psalm 63. Read it again yourself. And may the Lord lead and guide you personally. You know, hold it up to the light and hold it this way and that way. It's like, ooh, ooh. And, and that's how scripture ought to be. You know, a text, a verse, a chapter, whatever. You hold it up. It's like, wow, wow. And since the word is the living word, you know, our Lord speaks to us through the scriptures. He will reveal to you more things. Things that you haven't seen before. You, you can read through the, the scriptures a hundred times. And yet, he will still reveal unto you things that you haven't seen before. It's utterly amazing. And brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, He is our rock. And upon He is everything. He is our all. He is our everything. Okay? And we need Him. So with this video, I challenge you. Examine yourself. How does your day start? How do you go about your day? We saw a perfect portrait of a day of a day in the life uh, a day in the life thereof. And may this video help you. Sure helped me recently. Where is our focus? That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you so much for those of you who pray for us. We love you so very much. Thank you to all of those of you who help us uh, and pray for us. We, we need all the help we can get. Uh, this, has been a very, um, this has been a very busy uh, week here. Uh, this, pro this video, unless the Lord um, will stir something else, this will probably be the last video of this week until Monday, the 27th. Got some big videos coming up. Some pretty big videos. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we, like I said, we got things that we have to put in order. Um, things with my wife. Also, um, apparently, at least for now, it looks like the Lord wants us to stay here. Okay, we have to sign this notice of intent. Um, and unfortunately, they've raised our rent $50. <sighs> we can't afford it. But see, it's not up to us. It's up to the Lord. And His will be done. So, but anyway, like I said, we got a lot of stuff going on right now, especially for the remainder of this week. Like I said, um, the, I have a, a calendar right here. Uh, uh, this, unless the Lord stirs something, this will probably be the last video until the 27th. But like I said, we've got some big videos coming up. Please keep us in your prayers. Please pray for every, uh, one another. Talk with one another. Converse with one another. Have fellowship one with another, brethren, because we are to prefer one another over that. Okay? And just thank you. And in all things, give thanks. We love you. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we're going to get this uploaded. Got things to do. What is that? What is that? Oh. Thank you, dear brethren. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, bless every single one of you abundantly. In Jesus' name, God's people say amen. Bye-bye for now.